Hi, I'm Scott. And I'm Luke. This is the Android Guys Show. Hey, everybody. Luke, it's almost Mobile World Congress time. Yeah, it is. We've been seeing a whole bunch of stuff lately. Uh, little phones popping up. Mm -hmm. Some stuff we can talk about, some we can't. Uh, Exciting things. Yeah. They're, they're, it's... The, the Some of the phones that we're getting are coming from brands that we wouldn't have received a year ago, mm -hmm. two years ago. Uh, but it was kind of where we've been heading all along in terms of the types of coverage that we do. Yeah. With, you know, kind of like buyer's guides and unlocked phones and mm -hmm. seeing that, that, you know, that was kind of like the way to go years ago. Yeah. Getting it from your carrier, if you can avoid doing that, uh, that's the first recommendation i would make anybody if they say hey i'm looking for a new phone the first thing i'm going to say is try not to buy it from a carrier right because there are a lot of exciting phones out there mm -hmm. that you can find with just a little bit of work and i think the subject of unlocked phones doesn't seem as um taboo or scary yeah it's as not as strange to. i mean i think because it, it used to be Unlocking your phone used to be tied to your carrier. Yeah. You know, most people in at least the U.S., obviously, is, you know, you have a phone on a certain service plan and you, you get the phone from that carrier and it only works on that carrier. Yep. Whether or not it was made to work on any, you know, GSM network, now we know that that's a thing. Mm -hmm. um, but before it was... Uh, very much tied to the companies not wanting you to be able to jump ship with with a handset that they gave you at a, at a discount. Right. Um, but yeah, now it's it's more of a, a normal thing. People have have kind of gotten used to that. I'm I'm buying this, and then I'm choosing what to use yeah. for service. And I think maybe early on with smartphones, there was a lot of conflation between jailbreaking and unlocking sure and not knowing what that means and mm -hmm. am i going to do something that i'm you know requires some technical know-how some savvy right like, uh, is this legal does this <laughs> void my warranty if i unlock my phone right sure yeah. so that i think has kind of just cleared up over the over the years mm -hmm. uh so there's probably i think We've got four or five phones here that we'll be talking about mm -hmm. in the coming weeks, some of the reviews and hands-on time. And uh, very shortly, we will actually publish a couple of videos of some phones that we've spent some time with Yeah, and uh, some pretty interesting stuff. Actually, we can talk about one in particular, mm -hmm. uh, the Realme 9 series, the yeah. 9 Pro yep. and the 9 Pro Plus. Yep. Uh, you've been playing with the Sunrise Blue. I have. And that's the Pro Plus. Yes. A little bit smaller device. Mm -hmm. uh, 6.4 inch as compared to like the 6.6. .6. Yep. Um, $380 phone. Yeah. Now, you in your review, you, you pointed out even telling me about how uh, coverage wasn't quite the same. Sure. Even though you do have 5G yep. or good signal in most places, there are mm -hmm. some pockets that. Mm -hmm. So it, there is some qualification and buyer beware when it comes to buying your phone that way. Yep. But more and more we're seeing phone makers who are releasing devices with global bands. Yeah. And that's exciting. Yep. So uh, without diving into your review, what do you think of the, the 9 Pro Plus? I'm very surprised by it, especially if, if you just gave me the phone and I, I messed around with it and saw the features of it, it would, it would be impressive compared mm -hmm. to because I was coming from uh, Pixel 6 Pro. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be, it, it would, doesn't really miss much. You know, sure. I'm missing, I'm missing some of that processing speed, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and some of the, the GSM band switching and some of the service is different. Um, handset to handset, still same service provider, just different, yeah. um, signal strength. And, but when you then tell me the price of it, yeah, it gets a whole lot more impressive, right? To me, um, it's it's a very cool phone. Mm -hmm. It's very, very much uh, can handle any situation for anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the thing that really feels feels good, but maybe feels bad a little bit, is how good the camera is. Yeah, compared to my Pixel. 
It shouldn't be that close. No, it shouldn't be that close. <laughs> and, it, sh- and that it shouldn't. It's a testament to this phone, mm-hmm. as well as uh, a, a claim against the Pixel Six yeah. and the Six Pro in terms of there is nothing as good as this on the market mm-hmm. uh, experience. Where I had that confidence all the way up through five, mm-hmm. and when I would review any other phone, one of the things I, you know, if I'm using a Pixel as my daily driver, I'm going to continue to carry that around because when I want to capture something, I'm reaching for that phone. Mm-hmm. The six has made it so that I'm not so beholden to that device. Right. I'm putting my SIM in other phones and saying, "Hey, I'll be back later for this thing." Maybe. Yeah, because it's got some games or some things on it that I'm using sure. kind of on a regular basis. But I'm okay with it. It at minimum a sidestep mm-hmm. in terms of quality. Yep. And what we're seeing in some of these other phone makers are the you know near stock experience with some extras yeah that don't slow the phone down or make it ugly and feel like hey why why can't you just leave it alone right but there are some extras in there that you know like in the camera you'll see some ai filters and some color things to do Mm -hmm. as you take the photo that are just kind of nice to have yeah and they're a breath of fresh air so i like i like this time of year yeah because it, it starts to look at other things and go oh man it's another flagship. Mm-hmm. You know, this this company's phone is three hundred dollars less. Mm-hmm. And to your point about you know how the the nine pro stands up when you look at the price, that's kind of where I had been for a long time with the like the Pixel A. The A series, yeah. Once that was introduced, mm-hmm. that became kind of my favorite phone. Sure. Because of everything I could do with it at that price, mm-hmm. you then had to start to convince me or talk me into spending the extra money to get the flagship one right. because the junior flagship is just as good for me right. and for a lot of people. Right. So when people say, hey, what's a good phone for me? Or I'm looking to replace my whatever phone. I usually tell people to start with that Pixel A. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that a, a Pixel 6A mm-hmm. comes about and makes me get that confidence back in that uh, overall value proposition yeah. that – because, man, I was so, so excited for the 6. Me too. And I just don't feel so, so proud of it. No, it's a, a, it's a great to. device. Right. Some of the smarts that they added into it, the predictive text kind of stuff, the uh, or text to, speech-to-text yep. stuff, um, a lot of that stuff is awesome. And a lot of the camera improvements were needed, you know, with the true mm-hmm. skin toning and um, some of the the kind of – comping out things like those are cool features but those are features to add to an existing um working platform and it feels like they focused on that stuff and let the camera quality deteriorate because they were spreading themselves too thin that's what it could that's what it feels like to me yeah it feels Um, like they got in their own way right by adding these things that but maybe to do some of that stuff, they couldn't put some of the yeah. things in it that they had, you know. But and if that's fine, just come out and say that. Sure. I think that's the weird thing is that there's been no, you know, nothing from Google saying, "Hey, we know the camera's not quite what yeah. it was. Yeah. Here's why." Yep. Um, and and couple, I doubt we'll ever get that. Right. Uh, a couple other quibbles of things that, as I compare this phone for this price to the Pixel Six, are. The speed at which it unlocks with the fingerprint reader. Yes. <laughs> and face unlock. And face unlock. And the the fact that some of these other phones are just that much quicker to just unlock the mm-hmm. second you pick it up without this kind of like light up my thumb and read it. Oh, let me try again. There we go. Right. You know, that doesn't sound like much. But when you're checking your phone all day, mm-hmm. it's a pain in the butt. It really is. It's like wearing a pair of pants that are just a little bit too long. Right. You can do it. You'll and you'll get used to them, but then once you wear ones that aren't, yeah, you go, oh wait, this is how it feels to walk around in my bare feet, yeah. and not step on the bottom of my pants. Right, right. So it's just there are inconveniences that are kind of like the sum of them. Just look at it and go, oh, man, you were the chosen one. <laughs> yeah. you, this is the one that I was, you know, so excited for. But there's yeah, so there's a lot of really cool things coming out. Yeah. It's so, a good time to be a phone enthusiast. Yeah. I mean, we just came from, like, the big, you know, trendsetter, pacemaker of the year, Samsung. Yep. 
the Galaxy S22 series. Yep. But then now we'll start to see things from another Motorola phone, mm-hmm. Xiaomi, uh, Poco, Realme, um, Blue. You know, yeah. It's just kind of like, hey, if, no matter what your budget is or what your needs are, there's something fun mm-hmm. coming. Yep. And that's that's what Mobile World Congress is. So yeah. I'm excited for it. Yeah. Uh, let's take a quick break. Okay. We'll be back, and we've got a couple things to unbox uh, or to kind of uh, hands-on yeah. share with you guys. Yep. Uh, we've got a handful of things that work with Google's Nest mm-hmm. line of products, and we've also got some kind of a, a box for your private items. Uh, yeah. Uh, things to kind of keep things safe and secure and, and mm-hmm. away from anybody getting into it. So we'll be right back. See you. Okay, we're back. Yeah. Part two. Yep. Uh, let's dive into some products. We have a few things here. Uh, this is all from one particular brand, mm-hmm. uh, Wasserstein or Stein. Mm-hmm. I don't know which. I'll yeah. go with whatever you want to do with here. Wasserstein? Wasserstein it yeah, is. Seems like. Uh, but yeah, this is all stuff that's made to use uh, with your Nest system. Yeah, so this, I, I did look at their website to see they provide a whole bunch of accessories for different ecosystems. Mm-hmm. So if you've got an Arlo or you have uh, some other type of security system or camera or um, doorbell, the, they make accessories for those to kind of um, give you a little bit more flexibility out of them. One mm-hmm. of the things for Google Nest with the cameras, and I've seen more recently on headlines of things like the, uh, the doorbell, mm-hmm. is that it doesn't work. The battery goes quicker in, the, in this really cold weather mm-hmm. than what it initially thought it would be. Uh, but one of the things that you run into with cameras is you've got to change a battery. Right. And unless you've got a hardwired one or you're an indoor camera, you've got to go out there and change that battery or charge it every so often. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a pain point, uh, especially in the middle of the winter when right. you go out and it's you know around here it's – six degrees right you know or tomorrow it's 60 whatever but so uh here's one in particular product that you've got uh the solar panel for the google nest cam yeah so this solar panel is it's interesting because it's not it doesn't look like most solar panels there's no um like cross grid, Mm -hmm. like you can see it underneath if you hold it in the right light, but it's just a solid black. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of a cool look. Uh, And then you got your connector that it just, you know, slides into here. And then you have your uh, screw to tighten uh, for whatever, whatever swivel, you know, when you mount it on your house Mm -hmm. and it comes with the, um, the screws and anchors. Screws and anchors, and then a couple of um, pre-adhesed cable management. Yep. So if you want to, uh, and this looks like a very long cable. Thirteen feet. That's that's a it's a good amount of cable. <laughs> yeah. So for me, I, I have uh, one of these cameras. Uh huh. And I have to get up there to get it down, and it has a proprietary little plug. Right. So this cable has that adapter on it. And these yeah. are official, like, made for Google Nest products. So these right. are not some generic knockoff company or somebody trying to piggyback off of somebody else. Um, I would love the uh, the 13-foot cable right? because where I have the camera isn't always in the sun right? because it kind of – the way the house folds right? and I kind of watch over a certain area. Mm-hmm. So for something like that – I you can put it somewhere else. Right. So I can plug directly into the camera, yep. run it up around the corner, and then I can have that thing pointing at the sky Perfect. to pick up the sun. So when, you won't have to change the battery anymore. And you don't have to change the battery anymore. So That's that is pretty the awesome. premium solar panel mm-hmm. uh, for the Google Nest Cam. That guy runs about 74 to $80, I think, on their website. Okay. I mean, that's very similar to a, an extra battery for almost yeah. anything else you would use. Yeah, an extra battery and charger mm-hmm. that you kind of swap out. On a regular basis. It's very well made. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all enclosed, so you're not going to have any problem with 
moisture or anything like that. Yep. Um, very cool. What you got next? Well, we have next is the uh, angled stand with swivel, and this is for a Nest Hub Max. All right. You have the hub, right? I do. I'm My whole house is set up with Google stuff. Nice. Save for one Alexa Somewhere. product that we don't speak of. We don't speak of, and we hate when she picks us up because we're not talking to her ever. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, this guy's made for the Nest Hub Max, and you can see that basically it's a riser yeah. that keeps it, your hub up. So instead of sitting there. Well, it gives you some swivel, too. gives you some swivel. Does it have any angle to it? Yep. So it's it got has a little some... bit of angle. It's it's really nice because now I will say this, the feel of this is not as tight as I would hope. Okay. But maybe that's because the weight of the Max would. Yeah you know help balance that out right um it's a 25 degree tilt mm -hmm. according to their okay. website and a 360 rotation okay and then you can see of course on the bottom that's got some uh cord management yeah some so when nice you, cable management stuff yeah you plug that in mm -hmm. uh, i've had similar things for some of the older generation and these are nice because you can kind of uh move this in a place that sits in a corner a little bit better than yeah. just actually on the ground. Yep. And it keeps, if you have spills or mm -hmm. anything like that, this kind of gives you a little bit of safe inch and a half, maybe yeah. two inches up to keep that from getting wet. Um, it does have some uh, pre-installed adhesive for the mm -hmm. back to help keep your hub up here yeah. secure. So that's cool. No matter which way you tilt it, I could see if you were if it wasn't attached. If you go to tilt it down a little bit, you could maybe pull it off. Mm -hmm. um, but that's cool. It's it's a it's a sweet idea for you know a desk setup or a kitchen, mm -hmm. especially. Yep. Um, yeah. And that's cool where idea. my first one was was mm -hmm. in a kitchen, kind of had it up, uh, that kind of tilted around mm -hmm. our stove. Mm -hmm. So instead of being like snug against the wall, we kind of had this base and up kind of tilted at us so we're kind of like looking right maybe down a little bit mm -hmm. at it so um that guy runs about 26 to 30 dollars not 20, bad 26 to 28 i think on their website okay and it comes in this is like a um gray and then it also comes in a charcoal nice so that definitely matches the same color yeah and the aesthetics of what google has on theirs right um chalk that's the color chalk yes yeah it's good weight too. It's not too heavy. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have uh, an adjustable stand for the Nest Hub second gen. Mm -hmm. So slightly smaller. Pretty much the same uh, same, premise here. Same idea. Yep. So the next, the uh, Nest Hub second gen, is the guy uh, that I believe is the one that had the sleep mm -hmm. sensing and some of that uh, newer tech. Mm -hmm. This guy is, you know, he is a smaller, you know, designed, yeah, for, you know, for bedrooms, countertops, um, not obviously as big, but just as practical for people. Absolutely. So if you've got one of the smaller ones, yeah, the uh, the Nest Hub, same premise here. So this one is going to run about twenty five dollars mm -hmm. um, on their website. Also comes in the charcoal color as mm -hmm. well as this chalk. Yep. Uh, still got cable management on the bottom and some adhesive strips up top to keep it in line. And I will say that this does feel stronger. Doesn't have as much. Feel, feels a little bit better. Oh, yeah. So. I wonder if that's something you can tighten. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I didn't see a, a spot for a screw on the bottom, but it's, you know, noticeably, noticeably different size. Mm -hmm. Not that bad, really, but. It's almost like identical products, just shrunk down. <laughs> you got one more, right? Got one more. This one's cool because it's uh, it's one of those things that I never really thought of, mm -hmm. uh, but it would make sense to the right person. This is a uh, a wall plate for your doorbell. Mm -hmm. Kind of makes it a little bit more. Uh, Aesthetically pleasing at yeah. up front. Yeah. So I so if you if you're familiar with changing your doorbell at all, sometimes if you're taking off your old one, you're gonna run into uh a hole. You know, maybe they cut the 
if you have an aluminum wrapped front mm-hmm. door or something, uh, there's a hole and, and then your nest is your nest doorbell or whatever doorbell is smaller than what was there before. Or, mm-hmm. And it, it just looks or unsightly. Faded, or if there's like a yep, fade yep. from over time. Um, what this does is just a faceplate that covers it up uh, to keep it just hidden. Anything, any old mm-hmm. inner workings hidden. Buys about a three quarters of an inch or so yeah. extra around it. Yep. So it goes against the wall and then you mount your doorbell on top of that. Yep. And it's got a perfect spot. Mm-hmm. Same, uh, the holes line up in the same spot as the nest uh, mounting holes. Yep. It's all the same. So it's just an extra piece that goes in when you're putting it together. There's no extra installation needed, right. which I think is why it's such a cool thing. Yep. Is so it just works. That guy runs about 13 bucks. Not bad. Yeah. So it definitely worth it. If you're coming home every day and you're staring at some kind of a couple of scuff marks around your old yeah. spot. And you don't you want, want to repaint tighter. everything or mm-hmm. it's just, Hey, this is an easy fix to make it just look better. Yeah. So these are all from Wasser Stein. We agreed on. Yep. Uh, again, if you look at their website, you're going to see all kinds of stuff. They've got indoor outdoor cameras. Yep. They have stuff for wired and wireless de- devices, Google nest, Amazon Alexa, um, or the echo show thermostats. Pretty much if you have one of those types of smart devices and you're looking to kind of accessorize or maybe mm-hmm. get a little bit more uh, flexibility out of it, definitely check out their website. Uh, that's We'll have that link in the description. I don't want to spell it out, but it's wasserstein-home.com. So, cool. Thanks, Luke. Yeah, no problem. All right, we're back with one more hands-on. Yeah. Kind of early impressions to show off a little product here. This guy's a little bit of a niche yeah. product. Yep. This is the Trova Go Plus. Yeah. Luke, why don't you show us the Trova Go Plus? Why don't you tell us what it is? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's not for anything that I would necessarily use. Sure. But I'm sure there are plenty of people in our audience well, it's who, it definitely meets a need yep. that exists. I yep. know that this need exists. I just uh, it's it's low hanging fruit to make fun of. Yeah, it's something to just say. Yeah, that's uh, it's a hash box. <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> so this is, I mean, this is it essentially. It's it's a box. It's got a USB C port on the side, mm-hmm. uh, and it's got a little button here. That shows you uh, it has an LED indicator for mm-hmm. red when it's locked, and then you can unlock it with an app. Why don't you see if you can get into that for me? No, I can't. It's it's this is metal too. Yeah, it's so it's a, a metal an, enclosed an aluminum alloy with a CNC finish. If you look at it closely, you can see it's got some angles to it. It's very doesn't stylish. Sit, does not sit flat on the desk it looks like it's designed to be you know something you travel with yeah uh if you have anything that you want to keep uh private right if, you know if you're if you've got children in the house and you might have uh some things you need to be discreet about yeah i mean uh, or put it in there or uh you know for travel if you have uh some pills so, right or jewelry Mm-hmm. Or anything that you would say, hey, I want to just kind of lock all this up, and I don't necessarily trust the hotel safe or yeah. whatever. Uh, it's also hard to get this open, I guess. <laughs> so I will open this for you, Luke. Yeah, do it. This is the. Uh, I think it's this way. Verify. So in the app, I don't think you can see that. There is. Uh, Biometric, so it's just behind my password on my phone. Mm-hmm. So once I verify myself, I got it. There we go. So it opens up. Yep. And you can see inside here that it has kind of like a little recessed well. There's a compartment here that if you want to put your rings on there, if you want to put money or any other items behind that, mm-hmm. it's kind of almost the size of a pen. And then this is the uh, pill box or earrings or mm-hmm. something. 
you can just it's silicone here and then a plastic and you can just close it up and you can put that in there mm -hmm. so then it's locked there you go yep and then uh you can then just unlock it with the app yep it's going to search for it so it connects through bluetooth takes a mm -hmm. couple minutes to just kind of basically find and pair on that so right. Uh, we've been playing with it a little bit. I don't know. Let me see if I've got my Bluetooth. It's scanning for the device now. Whoop. All right. The dead air is real good for the podcast. There it is. <laughs> so you hit unlock, and then you just basically verify that. That's it. Yep. Other than that, you're not getting into it. That's a pretty good yeah. lock on that. No, yeah, it's it's solid. It th this doesn't move at all. The movement is actually down in in where the uh, the bar goes and snaps into. Uh, this it's a cool device. It it looks nice. It looks. It's designed uh, to look kind of like a charger. Yeah, like a, a portable brick. Yep. Uh, it is something that doesn't beg for you to look at it it's kind of you know, very nondescript yeah you um, want to keep it kind of discreet you don't want to draw attention to it and it's strong enough that it's going to take you know if you drop it or if, if it's in your bag and you drop your bag or something like that it's not going to just break apart somebody mm -hmm. can't necessarily just smash it open uh very easily i'm sure you could smash it open eventually but you're going to spend a good amount of time trying to get in yeah. there so according to the website it says Perfect for pockets, handbags, or athletic gear. It is designed to be overlooked, mimicking a hard drive or battery. Mm -hmm. Only you know its contents. This small but essential accessory gives you worry-free mobility. Yeah. Um, so the physical storage device prevents inappropriate audiences from accessing jewelry, vapes, prescription, slash recreational drugs, mm -hmm. or any other private objects that require discretion. Right. So this is the Trova Go Plus. Uh, this guy is available in the the one color that is charcoal, mm -hmm. uh, and you can find that for two forty nine on TrovaOfficial dot com. Uh, it's a pretty cool device. It it's, is. It's not something that I'm going to use often sure. or would use on a regular basis. Sure. But when it comes to traveling or just kind of keeping things, if you've got uh, you know young kids that are apt to go sneaking around the house, yep, you got a couple of things you want to hide. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Scott. Yeah, thank you. All right, let's move into the review segment yeah. of the podcast. Luke, you've got a product. I do. And I've got a product. Okay. Uh, why don't you go first? Okay. What do you have this week? I've been messing around with the Shift Cam, um, the battery-enabled case well kind of case i guess cradle for a mm -hmm. smartphone to use it with uh for taking photos or videos um we unboxed it last week basically how it works is your phone snaps into it and it rotates either uh portrait or landscape and you can connect bluetooth uh to the device and it gives you a shutter button okay so you can start your recording it has a nice hand grip ergonomically designed so it feels like you're holding a a can uh like a handle of a camera or mm -hmm. uh just something you know very comfortable very solid you're not going to shake around with it um but it also will charge your device at the same time uh it gives you options for uh, a hot shoe connection on the handle too so mm -hmm. if you wanted to connect like a, a microphone or a on camera light or something like that you could do that um, but I've been messing around with it, taking some photos, taking some video just to see how it feels. And it feels really nice mm -hmm. for it's, it's $150 and it gives you, um, that the case and cradle all in one and a carrying case and a, uh, charging cable. Yeah. Um, and then you have a couple extra bumpers and some rubber grommets in there, depending on what size phone you have, mm -hmm. um, or, uh, you know, what kind of securing you, you want to do sure. to it. Phone in and out of case, yep. different thicknesses. Yeah, all, all kinds of different options for, you know, whatever you need it to mm -hmm. do. Um, the thing is, is solid. It just, it just works. Yeah. You know, it, uh, it's very easy to pair. It 
you know, your phone will remember it. Mm -hmm. And then when it's powered on, it'll just automatically connect if you, if you want to set it up that way. Mm -hmm. And then it's just ready to go. And you just, uh, if you're holding, you can, you have this nice handle and you can support it with your other hand and just click to take a picture or you can click to start a video and then you have full control. You also can put that mount on a tripod, right? It's got a spot for a tripod mount. Um, so you really, if you're taking video or, or, uh, in a situation where you're going to be doing that all day, there's really no need to take it out of there. Sure. It's not like you have to, you don't have to unplug it. If the phone has wireless charging, it'll charge while you go, mm -hmm. or there's a C cable that'll go into the bottom. So you can charge the phone from there. Um, that doesn't get in the way of the tripod mount. Right. So you really have what with one device, you can kind of set up a small rig for your, your phone to be a, yeah. uh, you know, more of a cinematically, enabled device mm -hmm. and, um, well if it, the first thing you notice whenever you're doing video is switching from one hand to two just the stability alone yep. makes that video uh easier to watch yep. more compelling even with or without the image stabilization mm -hmm. that gives this very intuitive and i i did play with it a little bit it i like that it's angled yeah in a little bit instead of straight because yep. it's doesn't there's no strain on your wrist exactly yep and just the idea that it has, you know, over 6,000 milliamp hour battery on mm -hmm. that. So it's more than a day's worth of your phone. Yep. So if you're using this thing to take video, to take pictures, and you're worried about depleting that, as you said, it'll charge your phone wirelessly if it's got that in there. Yep. And then you can also just plug directly in. Yep. So that's a that's a pretty cool kind of like all-in-one yeah. experience. Um, yeah. So... Uh, that thing runs about what? How much? One hundred fifty dollars. Okay. Would you say that's worth it? I do. I do for for the capabilities of a Bluetooth device that uh, eases up shooting and mm -hmm. kind of sets your phone in a mode to do that well. And then with a six thousand milliamp battery, yeah, putting both of those together, I think that's you know a pretty uh, safe price point. Mm -hmm. I know once you get into anything that's like prosumer or professional yeah. video, the price just skyrockets. Yeah. And that still feels at that, you know, prosumer price. It doesn't feel like um, bloated for, uh, you know, for it being professional. Sure. So. Sure. Um, well, and it also has an ecosystem of uh, optional lenses too. Yeah. So they, with shift cam will do, uh, they have different cases and different, uh, a whole, range of lenses from telephoto up to macro mm -hmm. uh fish eye wide angles all kinds of stuff that may uh are made to work with any phone and then they have cases specifically for iphone that will let the lenses snap into like the case so mm -hmm. you don't have a universal clip um and you know paired pairing their lenses with that uh shift cam grip would be probably you know, anything you would need to get your, yeah. uh, you know, take your photography or, or videos to the next level. Awesome. Yeah. So that's the shift cam pro grip starter kit. Yep. It's an all in one kit. Yep. Awesome. Thanks Luke. No problem. Okay. We're back. One yeah. more review. One more review. Luke, I'm going to give this one back to you. All right, cool. Uh, I recently was messing around with two products we got from a company called O-Clean. Mm -hmm. I have their uh, X-Pro electric toothbrush mm -hmm. and the uh, oral irrigator, which okay. is like a rinse machine. Um, I hadn't heard of O-Clean before. Uh, seemed like... Uh, Pretty cool packaging, mm -hmm. pretty cool product design. I really like how um, how they it it looks like stuff that you want to use. Sure, it's very much uh, ergonomic. The oral irrigator is nice and sleek, um, and in practice, these things are great. I uh, I used I've been using the toothbrush for a couple days now. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a full color display. And it has uh, different modes for brushing. I just keep it on the normal one, and it does a, a two-minute timer. So you basically hit start, and 
uh, it it does just a kind of a vibrating, mm-hmm. and you just brush like normal. And after two two minutes, it just stops. Okay. Um, so the idea is you just uh, you know make sure you brush long enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's got a, a countdown. The only thing uh, that maybe would be helpful is um, maybe like a beep when it's like 30 seconds sure. or like a 10 second beep timer or yeah, something. 30. So you can do like quadrants. Yeah. Upper left, upper right. Right. Yeah. Um, after a couple of days of use, you can kind of get used to the timing, but I still find myself every once in a while pausing and trying to cheat and look at the time, sure. you know, in the mirror or something without, because if you take it out of your mouth covered in you know, <laughs> you just, toothpaste and stuff, you're just right. Making a mess. Yeah. Uh, spray and spit everywhere, but, uh, it works really well. Mm-hmm. I haven't charged it at all. So since it's that time. It is, uh, pr- it says 35 days on their yeah. website. So yep. that's a pretty bold claim. Yeah. Pretty lofty battery life. Yep. But if you think you're only using it, you know, twice, to maybe three times a day, depending. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it charges. There's a base station, and then it came with a little adapter that you can put on the wall to magnetically hang it on mm-hmm. the wall. I'm not using that. I'm just, it's just sitting on a a shelf. Um, but yeah, I just I plugged it in, and then have been using it, and it's it works great. Uh, it feels comfortable. Doesn't feel. I think I am a person that tends to press pretty hard. Yeah, uh, and it. You can you can see the head flex a little bit, but it doesn't feel like it's going to break or anything like that. Okay, uh, it's it's very um, comparable, as, I guess, as far as size to most tooth, toothbrushes. It's, mm-hmm. it's not like jumbo. It's not like really small either. Sure, it feels like it has enough range of bristles, kind of that you're not missing anything. Nice. Um, the oral irrigator is a little bit different of a story. It works well. Um, I had to – you have to learn how to use it, I guess, the the best way to use it because um, there, are, there are different modes. Yeah. It'll do like a pulsating. It'll do a spray. It'll do like a, um, you know, one pulse and then another pulse. It, it, it has a couple different things it'll do. And if you don't know what you have set on, you could – press the button and it'll spray some water and then you take it out and it just spray, sprays again. Sure. Um, I I don't know if I expected maybe at the start, if you hit start, there would be like a little timer, but there's not. It's basically when you press it, the water starts squirting out. Um, so, and it's, it's very powerful. Yeah. Like it's more powerful than I thought it would be. I thought it would be like a little, nice little rinse, but it's like, like a almost like a flossing kind of yeah. get in there and clean. Yeah, and they have remove. five different attachments, five different ends that are real easy. You press a button, pull it out, and you can swap them very easily. Um, but they have different different ends for different things. One that's like makes it a very tiny stream for like a flossing. One that's more of general rinse. One that looks kind of like a like a shield. Yeah, if you want to do like a front rinse, maybe or something like that. But even there. I mean, you'd have to keep it pretty close or it's going to spray and just yeah. spray right back out of your mouth. Um, it's not a – I guess it's not a uh, a bad part of mm-hmm. it that it's so powerful. It's just something to get used to. Sure. Um, it caught me off guard. Uh, but that – it works just as described. Same thing. I haven't charged it since I started using them. That says I think it has a 30-day battery also. Yep. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, – it's it's cool. Yeah. It, it's it's one of those things, the the oral irrigator, I don't know if you would necessarily have to use it. Uh, it could be one of those things where, you know, I, I was always uh, – I don't – never use like a rinse cup or anything. Sure. I just, you know, wash with – or brush with toothpaste and then brush with right. water. A little bit. Or of, yeah. swish it around and yep. that's it. Um, so yeah, I it's a cool thing. I don't know if it's needed. Maybe if you get a certain system down, mm-hmm. it might be helpful. Um, what it could be honestly helpful for is if you're eating something that's easy to get stuck in your teeth, sure. like popcorn or something like that. Yep, having some sort of uh, water floss machine. You know, it's yeah. one of those things that you don't think of ever getting until you have one, and then you're like. Oh, go get the thing. I got yeah, yeah. I got to 
piece of popcorn stuck in my teeth. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, that's another, you know, maybe use case I thought of. Yeah. But uh, – So as a brand, cool. you're not familiar with it, right. you know, really prior to receiving any of these products, uh, is it something that you think you would recommend to other people? Uh, the toothbrush, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for – the price on the toothbrush is what? Uh, I think it's eighty. Eighty dollars, yeah, seventy nine ninety nine. Has a two year warranty too. Yeah, has a two year warranty, and um, you know, as far as uh, we've tested some other electronic toothbrushes, yep. I had one before um, that was fine. Mm. Uh, this one is better. Sure, it's it just is better. I think it maybe cost uh, ten dollars more, mm-hmm. something like that, if I remember correctly. But um, eighty dollars is a very comparable price point. With other things I've seen at, you know, Target mm-hmm. or Walmart or whatever like that. Um, but, yeah, it works really well uh, for $80. I think yeah. it's – if you're looking for a toothbrush, this has the full-color display, the super long battery life. The, the You don't have to actually pl- – you're not plugging anything in to the device. I think that's another yeah. change is – You're docking um, it. Yeah, so there's no open – water ports mm-hmm. uh you know potential for any water damage on it uh so i think that's a plus yeah because that ends up making this like ipx7 yeah resistant too so yep. it's designed to get wet so you could use this thing in the shower yeah. without feeling like you're getting water right in somewhere you shouldn't be right yeah. um so i because i've seen a lot of them that have just a plug on the bottom yeah. where you plug to charge it and those are generally the cheaper ones yeah but um uh, yeah, uh, and the oral irrigator is one of those things that uh, I think if um, if it's intriguing to you, mm-hmm. if that's something that you're like, oh, I think I would like that, this one works great. Yeah, I I would I have no qualms, um, you know, recommending it. Okay, uh, but I, it's one of those things that for me, I don't know if I would actually ever need. Sure, sure. Um, it just so happened we got them both in a package, yep. so we're going to try them together to see how they work. Awesome. And uh, those are both from O-Clean. O-Clean. Yep. O-C-L-E-A-N. Yep. Thank you, Luke. No problem.